I know right, I got a lot of questions around some post quantum signatures I released last week too. Okay. Um. Good. Well, welcome to the April April twenty second and on Chris Working Group meeting. I uh, want to talk about IAW the VCDI BBS specification and similarities and differences from um from what they've done with the work in an on creds v2 um getting bbs support now going to call it bbs because of what i learned last week as opposed to bbs plus um actually i'll get your Wait, view what on. are they calling it um i'll get to that in a moment <laughs> um I just realized it's a good question to ask you, so I'll, I'll go to that. Um, reminder, this is, a, we're recording the meeting. Reminder, it's a Linux Foundation and a Hyperledger Foundation meeting, so the antitrust policy and the code of conduct are in effect. All right. Um, basically, I, I put some notes together in a, in a deck for um, talking about what was um, at IIW and so on last week. So I'll just go through that. Um, the presentations and sessions on and on creds and ZKPs, um, we, BCGov, um, I did a session on and on creds in W3C BCDM format. Um, I might as well do this, put this in chat. So if anyone wants to see all the links, that are in here, it's good stuff. Um, I put a link, the links to a bunch of sessions, either the presentations or the sessions themselves. Um, Kazooie did a how BBS signatures work without math, um, which was a, I, I missed the session, I couldn't go to it, but um, got the slides, so they're linked here. Um, in that, Mike, she talks about um, the difference between BBS and BBS plus and recommends using BBS signatures as opposed to BBS plus. Any thoughts on that? Did she give a reason? Um, where was it? Shoot. Um, shoot, where did I see it? I Since I didn't go to the session. Um, yeah, that probably doesn't help. <laughs> a hard question to answer if you don't go. <laughs> but But for some reason, I saw it. And um, it stuck out in my head. Oh, well, um, have you heard? So basically she said, BBS, what I remember was BBS was used for a while, then it was not thought to be secure. So BBS plus came along, but now BBS has proven to be secure. And so the term should probably be called BBS instead of BBS plus. Thoughts? <laughs> or are well, they two different things? Well, I mean, they're not much different. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, basically, they both. Well, OK. So Jan Kamenish is the one that came up with BBS plus. Right. So okay. initially, he said the proofs for BBS are broken. OK. Or, or because it's used in EPID. And he said the proofs are broken in EPID. What does that mean? We don't know yet. It just means you can't trust the proofs that are in EPID that's being used by Intel. Okay. okay. So he proposed BBS plus. Then okay. I know since we've been doing work at IETF or IRTF for right. BBS to standardize it. Yeah. Some other cryptographers have come forward and said, Hey, we can prove it's secure. If you just drop the extra scalar factor mm -hmm. and among other things, right. To say, Hey, we can actually prove it's still secure without that extra factor. So, I mean, that's really all it is, is a difference of a scalar value. So that's it really. Okay. So I don't, I don't really care which one we okay. use as long as everybody agrees. That's the one we're going to use. Okay. That's interesting. I did not know that. So if Kazooie comes back and says it's proven to be secure, I want to know the reason why she's saying it. Yeah. Know? Well, I mean, she said similar, but <laughs> but it still leaves that it's different from one another. So you have to say which one you're talking about. Correct. Yep. Um, so she's got a bunch of numbers here on, on different things. 
Yeah. Is it BBS signatures or BBS plus? Here's the one. Sorry about that. Here it is. I should have had this called out. So they are different. So there's 2004, 2016, and 2000 and 2023. Um, yeah, like I said, versions. they're not they're not terribly different from each other. They're just yeah. I mean, if if okay. when you look at it mathematically, the only difference between them really is single scalar value and possibly the use of the um. Let me think. And the, how they do the proofs, but they're not much different. So okay. when she's saying go with BBS, it's basically saying take the smaller of the two. <laughs> That's it. Right. But but I think what she's saying is the 2023 is more closely attached to the BBS versus BBS plus. That's what I think she's saying here. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Interesting. That's what I would suspect too. But we would... Regardless, we would go with the 2023 version. Um, I'll get back to this um, in a bit. I've got re another reference to that, so I'll leave that up there. Uh, Dan Yamamoto did a session on BBS with CK Snarks uh, for predicates and shared his playground for using ZKPs, which is pretty cool. Um, so I don't know if you've seen this, Mike, but... Um, there is a, a a playground. It allows you to just um, paste things in and then um, copy paste this and then say and and delete some values to say this is what I want to present and then and then display the presentation. Um, so that's kind of interesting. So it allows you to experiment with um, with um, yeah. Snarks is another way to do predicates. And then he's yeah. got interesting ways of showing how the he showed a demo of of using um, what the what the specification looks like when or, or what a request looks like when you add a predicate. Um, so a fun playground to use, and then the ability to do a predicate based on a zk snark. And then there was a demo of an anonymous door that Ken uh, Watanabe did, um, uh, which yeah, was Watanabe. pretty cool. Uh -huh. Watanabe. Um, I think did, that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, yeah when I've talked right. to him, that's how that's how I've yeah. always called it, and he's never yeah. corrected me. So. I've never got that. <laughs> I always we're I'm Ken with him, so um, so that was good. Uh, and I've got a link in there that shows that. And then Oracle Labs did a session. My, um, Mark uh, Moore and Harold Carr did a session on privacy with accountability from Oracle Labs. Um, they're the folks we've been talking to, had a number of good talks with them on what they're doing. And they're basically trying to um, put a layer of abstraction between um, the requests and the and the libraries that implement them. So quite similar to what, I, I think quite similar to what you show with BBS and, and PS, Mike. So being able to plug in different signature schemes, um, but they have a non-creds as one of the signature schemes um, versus PS. So it's kind of a, a, at, a at a slightly different abstraction layer than I, I would think. And then there was another one um, session that I did not go to. And so I have to look up the notes more. I haven't yet on accountable wallets with uh, VCs and CKPs. Um, Paul Bastian, who is part of the um, yeah, OWID, did a did an, a session on advanced on holder binding and basically referenced CKPs as advanced ways to do it. Um, as if as it as in its future work, um, but didn't really um, touch on it much in the in the mechanics that he talked about. Um, lots of reference to the dot networks BBS library and Richard Esplin was there and and Alina from dot networks. Um, Not familiar and, with them. At all. Uh, you heard of a guy named Lavash? Oh, 
So Lavesh is doing it. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> so Dan's work is based on Doc Networks. The Oracle Labs guys are are using Docs Network, Doc Networks. So a, a bunch, and it's an open source library. So you're not familiar with it at all. No. Really. I'm mean, oh. working with Lavesh before. Um, he does like cryptographically. I'm sure it's sound but he tends to think 10 layers above everybody else. <laughs> and so his libraries tend to be hard to use. Okay. Um, uh, the folks using it seem happy with it. So that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. Okay. In this, but we'll get to that. And then the last one was a session um, uh, that uh, Mirko... Malik did on privacy preserving revocation scheme using Bloom filters. So um, here are the notes from it. Oh, interesting that it pops up like that. Not quite sure why it popped up like that, but anyway, you can see that. Um, yeah, he's using, um, so the links to the presentation is there, so you can take a look at it. And it's, um, yeah, using Bloom filters for revocation and being able to um, um, prove revocation without um, in a privacy preserving way. So in a similar way to what um, Alisor does and so on. So um, interesting. I'd be curious to, to see that. how that actually works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, Bloom filter, you have to reveal what, what you're checking. <laughs> Are these the guys from, from um, the EU um, FC? Because they're yeah. doing the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mirko, 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 I mean, sorry, uh, is in a lot of the open wallet discussions and leading the, a couple of the groups there, the credential comparison group, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I, I had a question with this with Andrew Whitehead um, last year, year before, and it's, it's yeah, it's not fully privacy preserving. I don't quite. Okay. Get it, but... Okay. He's, oh, he's, um, I, I confess that I just looked at it quickly before this and added this note literally five minutes, less than five minutes before this. And he was saying it was privacy preserving compare in the overview notes, but I didn't get into exactly how he did it and, and how privacy preserving it was. So now you're making me question it. It's much better than status for sure. <laughs> okay. Well, and this is one thing I hate sometimes about this community is they'll say, well, it's privacy preserving, but when you get into it, it's really not. They just like to throw that tag on there. So people yeah. are like, oh, there it is. There it is. I know. So I'd like yeah. to get through all the BS <laughs> and marketing gimmicks to actually, okay, does it like, this is where we could do this with Allosaur and say, I think you had this somewhere where it has like a, a list of check boxes. Yeah. 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 And then, so and I can, if it beats that, it, then it's privacy preserving. Is. Yeah, huh? yeah. I'll take a look more at this one because I, I am I was intrigued with it, um, but couldn't go to the session. So, okay. The other thing that I've been thinking about, um, particularly last week, um, the CCG, and actually, I, I didn't even know if it's just a CCG. I think it's an actual candidate um, recommendation from W3C for BCDI BBS. So um, selective disclosure and unlinkable derived proofs in a using BBS uh, 2023 and um, from the from the W3C. So this is, I believe, um, a fair amount that Digital Bazaar is involved with and, and one other um, author, Greg, Bernstein, I think, is it Greg? Yeah, yeah. Greg Bernstein and Manu. Um, so selective disclosure, unlinkable proofs, um, starts from the VCDM, uses a data integrity proofs with Crypto Suite VBS 2023. So um, VCDM, verifiable credential data model and the data integrity proofs is making it pretty purely um, W3C. Um, it is a candidate recommendation. So. Features are based on RDF canonicalization. So JSON LD is, is very much required. So RDF canonicalization is the same as what is used with, um, uh, uh, never know what to call them. So non, 
non-privacy preserving um, W3C credentials where you basically prove everything. Um, does support selective disclosure because of the use of BBS. Um, and then they add three extended features, um, anonymous folder binding, um, which we would call link secret and in on creds, uh, pseudonyms with issuer known PIDs. So in this case, um, the issuer inserts a unique identifier, a, a, a random, random number, and then a domain proof is used um, so that the uh, verifier gets a consistent identifier from the credential, um, but all other verifiers get a different consistent identifier. So no a, correlation. That's just the domain proof. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the difference between these two is um, the unique identifier comes from the holder, which is, and and this one, it comes from the issuer. And so the holder would, or the verifier would be able to share it with the it, with the issuer if that was necessary. That's the difference between these two. Um, those are the only sort of um, advanced features, but we do have unlinkability with this because of, of using uh, a derived proof. So um, very interesting, no re reference to a presentation request format. Um, presumably that would use, uh, one would use diff, diff presentation exchange, I would guess. Um, Tim, go ahead. So I just wrote a quick note. I was, I was looking at the spec a few weeks back. The one thing to be aware of is that those advanced features of anonymous holder binding is all, uh, it's dependent on the IETF, um, getting done. So that risk. So where they actually make it into the, in, into the, um, Ah, I see. Version. So just, just to be aware of that. Yeah. And the ITF okay. stuff is very new. So this is these are extensions to the BBS Plus um, core ITF. Um, so, right. So, uh, Interesting. So so this is where I know that Doc Library supports these, and that's so that's at least one implementation. So interesting to know if another one does. Yeah. But they also need the IETF to reach R RFC status. Yeah. So okay. Um, it very much is a model for what the Anoncreds V2 specification might look like. Um, basically going through, it's it's fairly similar, uh, a summary of the algorithms. Um, not quite uh, not quite sure what what the separation is between the functions and and um, itself, but I guess these are the ones that are referenced in the um, in the BBS 2023, and these are called, so these are just sort of how you call them. Um, optional features, and then um, base proof, derived proof, and and privacy consider consideration. So interesting approach, um, interesting and useful for us in that way. Um, the big thing, for me is it's just it is a larger group working on this and gets us the features that that we're interested in um at, a, at from a speaking from a bc gov perspective that that we're very interested in which at least it gets us some of the way to um so gets us beyond selective disclosure to the unlinkability and the anonymous holder binding so very interesting from that perspective and including this part uh, it would be nice to have a few other features that are are, are very useful. Um, that brings me to the idea of adding BBS signatures to an on creds and 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 questions for you, Mike. Um, obviously, the demand is there. People are really like that BBS has a standard that's going to IETF. It obviously, again, from Tim's statement, doesn't go far enough for what we're looking for, but what what will it take to add um, BBS signatures to an on-credits V2? Like, uh, do we use the BBS library directly? But, and if, sure, it we could. Support, if it doesn't support all of the features, how do we get those features that aren't in there? Like if, if, the approved BBS libraries don't have the features to support these in this 
how do we get them into um, into an OnCreds V2? And then the other one that I wanted to know is, you know, is dot not is the dot networks library at the same level as an OnCreds V2, or is it? It's more like oh, an Agora. Yeah. If I had to guess, it's probably more at the level of Agora. That's what I would have thought. But at, in conversations last week, it wasn't clear. Like um, Mark and Harold sort of thought it was at a parallel to an OnCreds. Um, Doubt it, but I could be wrong. Okay. Okay. So you have not looked at it enough. Uh, I think that's one thing I'd really like to find out is, you know, is the effort. Or, and, and let me go. What's your answer to this? What do we need? What do you think we need to do to get BBS support into an on credits V2 as quickly as possible? What's the shortest path? Well, we need to figure out what the doc networks already has. Yeah. I mean, I'm just kind of looking at it right now. Okay. Uh, Looks like Lavesh has forked a lot of my code and put it in there. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, so those are Agora libraries now? No, I'm just looking at his, but like my Genara library looks like he forked it and put it in theirs, which is fine because it's Apache licensed, so he can yeah. do that. So. Uh, Okay. He's got DKLS. Interesting. He's got a bunch of snark based stuff. He's got, I mean, he's got, it looks like he forked my Allosaur. He's got that in there. He's got really? coconut, which is broken. That's, but that's a variant of Punch Level Sanders. Uh, he does. Yeah, I'm looking at signature. He's got like signature 23 and just signature. So I'm trying to figure out what's the difference. So I'd have to do a comparison just to see okay. what's in it. Can you do? Can you put that on your list? Because mm -hmm. uh, it. What I need is. Um, um, I think we have to have a way to do to say BBS support is there. I mean, the, the the three biggest things, and I'll probably get the list will be five by the time I finish it, but the three biggest things are um, having BBS support so we can just say it's in there, not it could be in there. Um, getting the um, objects externalized so that we have a way to publish objects. Um, at least a cred def and figure out what they're what they look like. And then the last would be W3C format. We really need to get it to W3C format. Um, I I really I think those are the the key things. I I prefer that we are not using RDF canonicalization. So I'm very happy to say we don't use it because I agree with the folks that say a signature is separate from the um, JSON LD. I, I like using JSON LD so that people, after they have verified the data, can can build a graph of all of the data. So I think that's very valuable to have JSON LD support, but not for the um, signing of the credentials. So I much prefer the approach that an on credits uses of of taking the values and encoding them and then signing them versus the RDF approach. Um, and the and the limitations that puts on a verifier, um, but um, would really like to see um, how we how we can get to um, you know BBS plus right off. So uh -huh. um, it's not hard to get to BBS plus to do the 2023 version. Oh, I've BBS implemented too. BBS yeah. plus multiple times. Okay. So I'm yeah. just waiting for uh, one committer to Blissful to give the okay. approval to move it to Agora. Then that will be done. 
But see, I like I like basing BBS off of that versus this Doc Networks because yeah. uh, the it's been audited, <laughs> and Doc Networks has not. Okay. And it'd be well, a lot I'm, simpler. I'm looking at his code, and boy, is it gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that you know, in talking to to Richard. I mean, I'm just wondering if they knew about Agora more, maybe it is a possibility that they combine on it I, um, and, I know. And, and work get done in a common place. Um, you know, the fact that there's fork stuff in that. And so which one is it just the, the one library that you found that's that is now an, an actual Agora one? Sorry, which one? What do you mean? Um, uh, you, you named one oh, right off. Oh. So, yeah, it looks like Lavesh forked uh, some of my Allosaur code, but digging a little deeper, looks like it's not exactly Allosaur. Okay. But he forked my Gennaro code, and that just kind of yeah, re one. Which, but see, Gennaro's been audited, and the VSS, the Verifiable Secret Sharing Library it's based on, is getting audited right now. Well, Gennaro's already been audited. And the verifiable secret sharing library is being audited right now. So anyway. Yeah. Genera, so all that, the right? difference is the Agora stuff has been audited yeah. by parties and the stock networks has not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think the plan would be to get a dis well, I'll 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 follow on with Richard um to talk more about what could possibly be done together if we can is that where richard that. works now is doc networks yes yeah okay yeah and then the folks at at oracle labs are also interested in the combination and as they say they're using the dot networks library as is um ken in his work kenya uh or sorry dan Dan Yamamoto is is doing using dot net dot networks. So yeah, so in looking at this, it's definitely not at the level of a non-creds. It's just the pure crypto. Okay. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, he forked my VB accumulator. Yep. Yeah, so he's he's done quite a bit of forking and borrowing code from me, <laughs> which is funny. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So definitely forked a lot of stuff for me. And that's fine. I don't mind if people do it. I'd just rather they contribute it back. Yeah, exactly. Than... Yeah. So. Okay. Well, I can take that up with um, with Richard for sure, and see where the interest is, and and so on. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, if you could think about um, how we get is adding BBS signature. Should we have done that as a as a mentorship project? We still can. We still I can. I think crazy from potential candidates <laughs> i know i'm just uh I, i'm just not answering those <laughs> just me neither too much. yeah yeah i just file them away and say okay thanks <laughs> so we'll get to the um additions i wonder if we can find a way to get that how to get that done okay let's think about that one all right. Well, those are the topics I had. The other, the last thing was um, uh, time change and um, frequency of meetings. I was thinking we should switch to twice, uh, twice monthly, the second Monday at this time, and then the fourth Monday at um, fourteen hundred Pacific, um, so that the folks in Auckland could join. Um, so that's, um, you know, get into the Asia Pacific region. So um, don't know how much that would work, um, but I'm going to throw that out there and probably set the, the next meeting at that. Mike, are you, that would be 1500 
3 p.m. your time. Is that a good time for you? I mean, 5 p.m. Uh, let's see. So 1,500, yeah, that's 3 p.m. That'd be fine. Okay, good. Okay. Sounds good. Um, it is kind of late in Eastern time zone. So apologies for that. But um, we would like to get, um, since there is activity happening in the Asia Pacific region, the one thing I didn't check was um, Tokyo. Pretty early hmm, in Tokyo, 5 a.m. Oh, no, I said 1,400 hours. 6 a.m. Getting closer. Could you do well, four? What, what's the current? What's the current time in Tokyo? Um, 11 oh, p.m. Almost midnight. Yeah. 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 Um, would you be able to do um, if we did one hour later your time? Like 4 p.m. My time. Yeah, 4 p.m. Are you still working at that time? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So I might change it to 15 to make it a little more um, friendly in Japan and see if we can get them involved as well in these. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, I'm just looking at this doc and that works. They've got a very nasty <laughs> implementation of the threshold signature and I've got a much simpler version. So. Okay. All right, and it would be good to get common. So are these, what I'd be interested in your assessment is how many of these are already in Agora? Uh, for BBS Plus? Or out of the dot networks <clears throat> libraries, like which ones are in Agora that could be could be common? Um, well, Allosaur is in there, Punchable Sanders is in there. Uh, key share, uh, no, no, no. key that, generation, that, that kind of stuff. The dot network is using. The one, the, which ones the dot network is using is in there. That's what yeah, I'd like so, to know. Yeah, I'll make a list, but that yeah. the ones I just shouted out, those are, they've already yeah. got that in there. Yeah, okay. He's got his one big library, which I don't necessarily like. <laughs> okay. That means I have to get everything, and I don't want everything. I only want yeah. a few things. So, yeah. Anyway. Okay. All right. Well, that's all I had for this meeting. So unless there's other topics, anything else from anyone? Um, my, my question is how interested are people in punch level Sanders versus BBS? I um, think the only reason they're picking it is because one is IRTF and the other isn't. <laughs> yes. I think that's the big thing. I, I, that's I like think the ninety nine percent case. That's the only reason people are picking it. Yes, yes. Um, people just don't know, like the at the level we were talking last week. They really just don't know enough about PS signatures. And um, I do make the pitch. I do wonder about the one thing um, that was in. Um, Kazooie's presentation, where is that again? Yeah, this one. Um, she's got a number of comparisons, and notice that she's got this caveat on PS signatures that it, yeah, like how this goes up based on the number of signatures, and that comes back to this idea that you can't necessarily have arbitrary data in a you can't just say, oh, we can have any number of, of of messages in a in a VC, any any number of claims, and therefore arrays being supported. So the you numbers have to just looking at this are wrong, actually. Really? <laughs> yeah. So the secret key in BBS is actually only uh, 32 bytes. So I don't know why it's that big. Okay. And the public key is only 96 bytes. Off by um, two. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. So this is 40. And uh, then the one thing she doesn't have on there is time to compute because PS signatures can be done in parallel, whereas BBS is serial. There you go. Yeah, see, I, I don't, I, I think that's wrong. But, you know, oh, yeah, signing is, well, 
that still looks wrong to me. <laughs> See, I wonder what library she's using for this. Yeah. Um, we'll go back. Yeah. So the size, the signature on uh, PS, oh, that was correct. Proof size, I think that's wrong. She's saying it depends on the number of hiding messages. Well, that also applies to BBS. Oh, she did put it in there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think the security, the secret key is wrong. That's only, it's only 64 bytes. On what? On PS? PS on PS signatures, yeah. That's pretty radically off. Yeah. The public key, maybe it's, public key might actually be bigger than that. But 40. There? Yeah. I, let me, Okay, let me do a calculator real quick. Yeah, like, so for me, the public key is actually 5,472 for 40. And, and the 40 is set at schema definition time, at, at, at key creation Correct. time, right? So you, That's you could only ever have 40. So arrays... Whereas with BBS plus, you could have arrays, an arbitrary number of of actual claims. No, well, the PS signature just says you can ha you can't have more than forty. You can go less. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you'd have to pick a size that would fit the use case. Well, isn't that what we always do anyway? <laughs> well, but but BBS lets you not do that, right? You just pick a key and. If there's an array in there, you just keep signing, as far as I understand. Is that not, is that right? Well, you still have to, so with BBS, you still have to know how many you're going to sign. It's just, there's some, there's the, the claim generators that mm -hmm. you can compute at on the fly. That's where the right. extra sign time comes in. Yeah. And like, I'm the one that came up with that idea. So I'm glad to see they're still using it. Uh, because yeah, they don't depend on the key at all. Uh, so, but it, but at the same time, the schema defines this is how many we're going to use, right? Well, well, if you have an array, and and a different credential has four, um, four rows in the array, whereas another one has twenty. My understanding is you could use a BBS plus set at definition time and be able to still sign that credential even though it's got an arbitrary number of rows in the array whereas ps you couldn't that's right yes you'd have a limit of how many so you'd have to sort of at definition time say oh we're never likely to have more than five elements in this array so or five rows in this array so we'll make it 60. yeah messages okay that is true okay just the, making the, sure the, my understanding so now go go to the proof size yeah the proof size looks smaller um proof generation time see that doesn't look right the proof the proof proof time looks wrong <laughs> for ps for ps i mean yeah PS. because because with 40 i can do oh, Prove. With 40, I, I can do it in about half that time, like about two milliseconds on my machine, and that's in debug mode. Okay. Verify. Well, depends on... It depends on which library they're using. See, I, it, they don't specify. Yeah. One of the so, uh, probably best thing to do would be to normalize these numbers, because all it is is a relative, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a little misleading, but I mean, like I said, prove I get it, prove and verify I get about half that on my machine using the audited library. Mm -hmm. But I don't have an implemented BBS to compare it with. Okay. The other thing that's that you don't see is threshold signing. Yeah. PS signatures require no rounds and then it's non interactive to create a signature. BBS is extremely complicated. The one that I've done 
is a little faster than the one that Doc Networks has. It has a more complicated setup. But once the setup's in place, then signing goes faster because it's done in just two rounds versus theirs, which takes eight. And sorry, threshold signature meaning multiple signatures, multiple no. keys. Sorry, what's threshold no, signatures in this context? Threshold is where I have more than one signer. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Okay. Oh, well, what I mean is like the output for like you can't create a valid signature without at least a threshold number of participants, right? You don't. You only get one signature out. Too many people mix it with multi-sig. Okay. It's not a multi-sig. A multi-sig is I, like five people to each generate a valid signature and the smart contract validates that there's at least five, you know. And this? Well, threshold is you only get one valid signature out and you don't know how many signers were behind it. And if you get below the threshold, you don't even get a valid signature. Uh, I see. Okay. So you don't get five signatures. You get a you get threshold one. number contributing to a single signature. Correct. That's the difference between a threshold and a multi hey. So to do a threshold is like, I mean, that's basically what Lit does, right? We, they do yeah. threshold signatures. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so to do a threshold BBS is very complicated, whereas a threshold PS is really fast. So the cool thing is if you're pairing it with Allosaur, I mean, Allosaur works with all three of these, right? Yeah. Yeah. But Allosaur also uh, signing is non-interactive. Non-interactive means like the signers don't even have to talk to each other to create a signature. Yeah. Someone's got to bring them together. Someone's got to receive yeah. them all and, and, and construct, but they don't have to do it. They don't have to coordinate that. It's all no. parallel. No. So like, for example, with ECDSA, right, depending mm -hmm. on which implementations you use, like let's say there's five signers out of nine, right? Yeah. Yeah. Those five signers all have to talk to each other and say, all right, here's my round one output, right? But then they can't proceed to the next round, so they all validate round one. Then they do the same for round two, then round okay. three, uh, and like and so on until they're done, right? Yeah. And then the output of that is what I call signature shares. And then yeah. you're right, someone has to combine those. Well, Lit basically just says, well, we just send those to the... To the um, to the end user mm -hmm. and they can aggregate them because you know they trust themselves mm -hmm. and if it and they they aggregate and if it validates they got a valid signature and if it doesn't they can complain okay um some no, of the implementations so again, don't me, do that let me, let me play that back to you so with with lit and the and this threshold they the person requesting the signature sends it off to a bunch of of parties. They sign it independently of one another, send it back, and then the requesting party assembles it into a signature. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's what but I thought. Some some networks will have what they call an aggregator or a combiner or a coordinator yeah. that will receive those partial shares yeah. on behalf of the requester and mm -hmm. then send it back uh the reason lit chose not to do that is because that party could be compromised yeah and it's fine like most people that call lit are using an sdk anyway so it doesn't matter and aggregating is mostly just an ad operation <laughs> so okay. it doesn't it's not very slow at all it's very fast yeah so why not just have the user do it because they're going to want to check the signature anyway yeah the difference is if I get signature shares, um, the way we do it, they can complain if one of the signature shares is bad. Like if, let's say they aggregate it and then it's not a valid signature, they still have the signature shares and then they can say, well, one in three were bad. And then they mm -hmm. can complain and then Lit can investigate why it was bad. Yeah. 
So you can't do that if you, if you have an aggregator or a coordinator, whatever you want to call it. Just right. for the sake of simplicity, I'll I'll call it coordinator. Yeah. So anyway, um, the same thing applies to threshold BBS, right? They have to talk to multiple rounds to each other, and it takes quite a long time. It's very complicated. Whereas with punchable sanders, like as a user, I just query, let's say there's nine nodes. Well, actually, there's more than that for lit, but I only have to query a threshold of them. So I say, hey, all right, I want a punch hole Sanders or BLS. Those nodes don't even have to talk to each other. They just immediately respond and they're done. Okay. Versus like, you know, ECDSA or BBS or even CL, for example, you're going to, it's going to go, okay, we'll get back to you later when the signature is done. Yeah. Because it's, it's going to take a while. <laughs> And then, and then the other model is multi-sig, which is a different model, which just says independently n number sign it. You attach all of the signatures, you verify all of the signatures, and then you look at the threshold and make a decision yourself if that's good enough. Yeah, that's how like usually that's done with a smart contract, right? They basically say, okay. "I need yeah. here's all the valid signers' public keys." Yeah. So, in looking at it, since it's all public. I know who all the signers are. There's uh -huh. no privacy with multi-sig, right? Yeah. Because um, with threshold, there's only one key, and I don't know how many people are behind it. So there is some privacy aspect to threshold. But with multi-sig, I know all the public keys. I know all the parties. And the smart okay. contract, like, for example, says, I'm not going to do anything till I've received at least, say, three out of five. Yeah. And then you get three. I mean, carry works the same way. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So then I say, okay, once I've got that many, then I can validate all of them individually. Yeah. And if they're all good, then I'll do whatever it is. Yeah. I was supposed to do. So they're just a play on the same thing. Right? I mean, they both more or less achieve a threshold-like yeah. uh, pr protection. Yeah. But actual threshold cryptography is better. Because then it's Got mathematically it. enforced instead of software enforced. Yeah. Got it. So if you trust the math over the software, I mean, some people argue, well, you have to have software to implement both. Yeah. But if someone compromises the software, the threshold cryptography is not broken. Multi-sig is. Okay. Like there's no way to subvert threshold unless you break the math. And if you've broken the math, good for you. Let's hear about it at the next crypto conference. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good discussion. That helps a lot. And other things. Um, we did a we introduced a new did method. Um and yeah, did web plus, right? No. No. Oh. D did web plus is somebody else. Um, oh, that's right. Trust trust did web. And one of the things we talked about was and we and I did it in that um, same way, multi-sig, um, where we uh, there's a, uh, a a spec associated with dids that allow for um, multiple signatures on a on a on a on a thing to be valid on a data integrity proof to be valid, and but it uses multi-sig. I see now versus threshold. Would be interesting to see whether threshold would be a good idea or not. Why not? I yeah. mean, if you That's support one sig, that one sig could be a threshold behind the scenes. Yeah, exactly. Then it becomes the verifier a doesn't even care how the signature was generated. Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. It's good to know the difference anyway. We'll th we'll think about it. But that's a it really is a a layer below our did method. It doesn't rely on that in any way, and and so on. It would rely on verifiable. Uh, uh, Look, you're just, it, but anyway. you're, you're just, I mean, one, I mean, carry, for example, and most did methods rely solely on signatures. Yeah. Um, if you look at Dave Fusby's provenance logs. Yeah. That just relies on pick your verification method. Signatures yeah. is one of them, but it can be any verification method. Yeah. And that's, that's similar to what we've done. 
um, verifiable conditions is the verification method. And right. It it involves multiple signatures, and you've got to have a threshold. But it it uses multi sig, not threshold. Well, multi sig is just easier. Most people yeah, don't exactly understand threshold cryptography, but yeah. like Agora but already has possible. the threshold stuff built in. in. Words, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. That was awesome. Uh, much appreciated. And I will post a new schedule out to the mailing list and to the um, and and make sure the calendar gets set up in the right way and let everyone know um, the timing of those. Hey, at our next meeting, can we talk about those data models? I mean, we've you and yes. I have talked about them before, but you said yeah. we should move forward on standardizing. So let's pick one and standardize it. Okay. All right. Maybe it's the signatures. Maybe it's the revocation. Maybe the revocation would be a good thing to do so we can put it forward as another method. Right. Okay. And it's going to be simple enough. You just call it the Allosaur <laughs> revocation yeah. scheme. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I really want to get those out there. One of the things we did with this did method is made it dead simple to just do paths off the did so that we can have all these objects um, uh, just, uh, you know, off the did and store it on a web web server. So you don't have to have a blockchain or anything. You just, you know, the issuer just puts them available, makes them available um, for, for the reference objects. Okay. So anyway. And right. uh, Sam Jacques is presenting Alisor in Asia next month. Oh, is he? Yes. Well, right. it's going to be me, Hart, or him. And he said, no, I'll do it. So he's going. Right. Singapore. Right. Singapore? So, what yep, conference? Asia you know? CCS, which is a tier one conference. So Alisor was accepted to that. So it's a very okay. technical conference, not necessarily cryptographic based. Yeah. But the whole point of Alisor was not no major innovations in cryptography although we did do that um it was mostly a technical use case solving as you've seen yeah yeah cool so yep and then we're also working on the post quantum version of that so so with this verifiable conditions um did scheme dot networks would be or talk, or sorry, lit lit protocol would be a good way to organize the the multi the threshold to collect well, the, yeah, the so, threshold signatures. Well, yeah. So how lit works is they have what's called programmable key pairs, and okay. to create a key, you basically specify the access control conditions. That's it, and then the okay. key is created instantly on the network. Doesn't matter how many nodes we have. Um, believe it or not, I came up with a unique way to do that really fast. <laughs> okay. So keys, keys are created instantly or revoked instantly on the network. And then to use that key, you have to meet the access control conditions. But the key is distributed among all the nodes. So no, unless the threshold of the network, there's, we don't use a blockchain at all. There's no blockchain yeah. for this. Yeah. Um, but the key depends on the access control conditions. And you can basically say this key can only be used for signing. This key can only be used for, you know, whatever. Signing from these requesters. Yeah. Whatever the case is. And, and access control allows a single person, but also allows a threshold? No. The, well, the, th the access control conditions can be whatever you want. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It can be... A I, I could have a key that I access via there, but I can also say the access control is a threshold number of people. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the but the key itself that it represents on the network is thresholded among our nodes. Exactly. Okay. Oh. Okay. And the cool thing is you don't have Another to hold any. Threshold. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Yeah. We we already handled the threshold and the signing and all of that for you. So you don't even have to worry about the threshold. You basically just say, hey, Lit Network, since you have 30 nodes and our threshold is 20 out of 30, so it's a super majority. Mm -hmm. um, you basically say, I need an ECDSA key for my DIB 
did trust web or whatever you called it. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it can only be used for signing updates under the following circumstances. Like Steve McCowan has to be there in person presenting his, uh, you know, passport. <laughs> and that's it. Right. And then the lit network validates that and says, is that condition met? If it is, then we'll sign. Otherwise we don't do anything. So pretty cool. Okay. Yep. We are All working right. to add BBS and punch level Sanders and Allosaur to the network as well. Okay. So that's why we wanted a faster threshold scheme. Um, if you really care about how I did it, I can explain it to you, but it's it would require more time than we have left. Exactly. So. Which is none. All right. None. But if you really want to noodle on it, it's called pseudo random correlation generators, PCGs. Okay. And the major innovation I came up with was a way to thresholdize that. Okay. P PCGs, they work in a distributed way, but they require N out of N. So they yeah. require everybody that participated, and I came up with a way to do it T of N. Okay. So it does slow it down, but not by much. Like we're talking just a few milliseconds per person. So it's not bad. Yeah. Anyway, that's all, all right. the time we have today. That's all the time we have. Thanks all. And we'll see you next time. I'll be posting when and where. See ya. See ya.